We all know something about various artifacts from ancient times. They are found all over the world and are a major part of our human heritage. In this video, we take a look at some of the most mysterious ancient finds ever to appear. If you like this video, you can support us by sharing it with friends and subscribing to the channel. The Signs in Nazca The Nazca signs, sometimes also called geoglyphs or drawings, are ancient lines drawn on the Earth's surface, located in the territory of the Nazca Desert in Peru, about 400 kilometers from Lima. They were included in the UNESCO World Cultural and Natural Heritage List in 1994. They are believed to have been created by the Nazca tribes, whose civilization was developed during the period from 200 BC until about 600 AD. They range from simple lines, triangles, and spirals to much more complex and stylized drawings, such as a spider, hummingbird, llama, monkey, fish, and others. The largest are 270 meters long, and their total area is 500 square kilometers. The Nazca figures were discovered in 1926 by archaeologists Alfred Krober and Totibio Mejia Zepse. The initial assumptions about their purpose is that they are part of an ancient irrigation facility. In 1941, during a flight, Paul Cusack of Long Island University noticed, in addition to the lines, numerous spirals, abstract shapes, and stylized drawings of animals carved into the rocky surface of the Nazca Desert. He believes that at certain times the sun stands at the end of the lines and, according to him, this is the largest astronomical calendar in the world. Later, the German mathematician Maria Reiche took up the study, mapping, and measurement of lines, which became her life's goal for five decades. In 1968, Erich von Däniken drew public attention to the idea that the strange drawings were actually ancient hangars and landing strips for alien warcraft. To this day, Archaeologists, astronomers, and geologists continue to study the geoglyphs at various universities around the world. Since 1997, large-scale Peruvian-German scientific research has been conducted near the nearby town of Palpa. The Nazca Palpa project is led by Johnny Eisler and Marcus Reindel of the German Archaeological Institute and is dedicated to the systematic interdisciplinary study of the area's ancient inhabitants and drawings. The humanoid figures are relatively few and are located on the slopes. The most famous of them are the astronaut, 32 meters long, and the alien, discovered in 1982. Almost all of the drawings are on a huge scale and done in the same way. The outline is outlined with a single continuous line. The true shape of the image can only be observed from the air. The lines themselves are furrows 135 centimeters wide and up to 40 to 50 centimeters deep, forming white lines against the background of the reddish desert, which owes its color to iron oxide. There are numerous theories about who made the Nazca lines and why. When they were discovered in the 1920s and observed only from the ground, it was assumed that they were some kind of ancient irrigation system, with underground aqueducts and wells lying beneath the pampas. According to this theory, the lines indicate their location. American archaeologist Paul Cusack later suggested that their creation was the work of a power-hungry priest who used his knowledge of astronomy to manipulate and control society at the time. In 1967, while observing and trying to confirm these assumptions, the American astrophysicist Gerald Hawkins failed to prove his thesis and discover the connection between the celestial bodies and the Nazca images. Two years later, Eric von Daniken published the then very popular idea that the lines were the work of extraterrestrials who used them as runways for their spaceships. This idea had a short life, however, because it cannot answer many questions, such as the purpose of the figures that represent animals and plants. According to the latest theory, the Nazca lines were used as paths for ritual processions to pass. Each class in Nazca society had its own path, and some paths are related to astronomy and indicate when it's time to sow, the winter and summer solstices, and the movement of the celestial bodies. However, a definitive and unequivocal answer does not yet exist. The Koso Artifact The Koso Artifact is an object that its discoverers claim is a car spark plug encased in a geode. It was discovered on February 13, 1961 by Wallace Lane, Virginia Maxey, 
and Mike Meixel while searching for geodes near the town of Olancha, California. It has long been hailed as an example of an artifact that challenges, or may challenge, conventional historical chronology through its presence. The artifact has been identified as the 1920s champion brand automobile spark plug. An automobile spark plug sealed in a 500,000-year-old geode would represent a significant scientific and historical anomaly, since these spark plugs were invented in the 19th century. Critics argue that the stone matrix containing the artifact is not a geode, but an aggregated concretion that can be explained by natural processes that took place over years or decades. However, what is the story behind this mysterious and strange artifact? After finding it, Mikesell breaks open its surface and discovers the item. In a letter written to the Desert Magazine of the Outdoor Southwest, a reader stated that a trained geologist dated the concretion to be at least 500,000 years old. The identity of the geologist and the method of dating have never been clarified, nor have the findings been published in any known scientific publication. Furthermore, at the time of the artifact's reported discovery, no method existed to date the concretion. There are only examples of accretions surrounding iron or steel artifacts, some of which have been reviewed by J. M. Cronin. There are several psychoscientific theories about the origin of the artifact, including an ancient advanced civilization such as Atlantis, prehistoric ancient astronauts, human time travelers from the future who leave or lose the artifact during a visit to the past, an investigation by Pierre Stromberg and Paul Heinrich with the help of members of the Spark Plug Collectors of America organization, identified the artifact as a 1920 Champion Spark Plug, widely used in the Ford Model T and Model A engines. Chad Windham and other prominent collectors agree with this assessment. Stromberg and Heinrich's report stated that the Spark Plug had become encased in a nodule composed of iron derived from the resting Spark Plug. Iron and steel artifacts quickly form iron oxide nodules as they rust into the ground. On April 12, 2018, the family of one of the discoverers of the artifact contacted Pierre Stromberg. He was offered the opportunity to physically check the find. Stromberg accepted and arranged for the artifact to be examined by a geologist from the University of Washington's Department of Earth and Space Sciences. Inspections confirmed the previous conclusion that the artifact was a 1920 Champion spark plug. As for the claims that there are traces of fossilized shell on its surface dating back 500,000 years, the University of Washington geologist could find no evidence. This raises the question of the qualifications and competence of the original alleged geologist in 1961. The reason the artifact gained the notoriety it does is the original dating of its shell. As of 2019, the artifact is located in the Pacific Science Center in Seattle, where it is displayed in an exhibit called what is reality? The Baghdad Battery The Baghdad Battery, or Persian Battery, is actually a collection of three archaeological artifacts found together, a vase-like ceramic vessel, a copper pipe, and an iron rod. The find was discovered in the Kujutrabu area, Iraq, near the ancient city of Tesiphon. The artifact is believed to date from somewhere between 150 BC and AD 650. The origin and purpose of the finding remain unclear. Some scholars have suggested that the objects function together as a galvanic battery, possibly used for electroplating metals or some kind of electrotherapy. A galvanic battery is a source of electricity in which electricity arises and flows as a result of a chemical reaction. Any combination of two different electrodes and an electrolyte is called a galvanic cell, and they serve as sources of constant voltage. According to an alternative theory, the artifact served as a storage vessel for sacred scrolls. The artifacts consisted of a clay vessel about 13 centimeters long and a neck about 4 centimeters wide, containing a cylindrical copper tube into which an iron rod was inserted. At the top, the iron rod was insulated from the copper with asphalt, and the tube with the cylinder in it is attached to the neck of the clay vessel. Traces of corrosion can be seen on the find. The copper cylinder is hollow so if the vessel was filled with liquid, it could also react to the iron rod. An experiment confirmed this. Professor Przinsky of North Carolina State University made a similar kettle, filled it with 5% wine vinegar, turned on a voltmeter, and made sure that a voltage of 0.5 volts is created between the iron and the copper. Much to everyone's amazement, this ancient battery lasted a full 18 days. William Koenig, 
A fellow at the Iraq National Museum in the 1930s thought that the objects might date to the Persian period, but according to St. John Simpson of the British Museum's Near East Department, their original discovery and the context of the excavations were not well documented, and the evidence for this dating is unsettled. Moreover, the style of the making of the clay vessel refers it to the Sassanid period, that is, from the beginning of the 3rd to the middle of the 7th century. The Antikythera Mechanism The Antikythera Mechanism is an ancient device designed to mechanically visualize the observable configuration of the solar system. 205 BC was used as a starting point in time, and the device was dated to the middle of the 2nd century BC. Its remains were found among objects testifying to a shipwreck that happened around 70 BC near French Antikythera. This dating makes the device extremely important to history, not only in terms of technical development, but also in terms of knowledge in general. It is generally accepted that such engineering achievements date from much later times. Turning a knob drives a system of metal gears that set the positions of various pointers on the front of the device. The construction is in many ways similar to that of a watch, but modern research also presents it as an analog computer. In fact, many authors consider this to be the first example of an analog computer in the world. A large-scale international project has been organized to study the Antikythera mechanism. The original find is on display at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens, together with a reconstructed copy made and donated by Professor De Sola Price. The mechanism of the find consists of several metal components badly damaged by millennia of being on the seabed. They were found during searches of the remains of an ancient shipwreck, first carried out in 1900 and repeated several times subsequently. Through detailed tomographic studies of the artifact, it was established that it was originally nearly 40 different gears assembled into a functioning mechanism. The whole mechanism fits into a box with approximate dimensions of 34 by 18 by 9 centimeters. On its front, there was a semblance of a dial with various explanatory texts, some of which have been read. In total, the scientists were able to read 500 words containing 3,500 letters. According to Professor Mike Edmonds, these are detailed instructions for using the tool. Their formal style speaks to the fact that the device is designed to be much more than a toy for wealthy collectors, writes the Daily Mail. The information contained from the red text confirms earlier assumptions about the purpose of the device. The Antikythera mechanism calculated the positions of the sun, moon, and planets, as well as the phases of the moon, and even upcoming solar and lunar eclipses. Although the mechanism shows the positions of the planets and the sun in the zodiacal constellations, the main functions of the device are still astronomical. This is more serious than a toy, Professor Edmonds said. We find indications of the existence of such devices in many of the ancient texts. Cicero, De Republica, mentions mechanisms that modeled the movement of the planets on the celestial sphere, the work of Archimedes, and brought to Rome after the siege of Syracuse in 212 BC. He also mentions that his contemporary and acquaintance, the Stoic philosopher Posidonius, also constructed such a device. At the beginning of the 2nd century AD, Claudius Ptolemy wrote his Hypotheses on the Planets, a work which contains the necessities of the construction of such a device. He also mentions customary ways of creating spheres, which is now accepted as evidence of an existing forgotten tradition. Pappus mentions a book by Archimedes on this subject, and authors such as Lactantius, Divinarum Institutionum Libri 7, Claudian, in Sferum Archimedes, and Proclus, commentary on Book One of Euclid, also mention his achievements in this field. William's Enigma Light. In 1998, electrical engineer John J. Williams found what looked like an electrical connector sticking out of the ground. He started digging and discovered that it was a triple plug embedded in a small rock. According to Williams, he unearthed the unusual stone during an excursion in a rural area in North America, far from human settlements, industrial complexes, airports, factories, and plants. Although aware that this would damage the credibility of his discovery, Williams refused to give the exact location of the discovery, on the pretext that he was afraid that other mysterious relics would be looted from there. Known as the Enigma Light, a combination of the words enigma and monolith, or petrodox, 
The device is an unmistakable looking electrical component embedded in a naturally formed solid granite stone composed of quartz and feldspar. Due to the mystery surrounding the find, its price tag of $500,000, and the extraterrestrial theory surrounding it, many in the scientific community have categorized the enigma as a hoax, fabricated only to bring fame and fortune to its owner. Still, Williams explains that his unusual stone is available to any researcher for analysis. Nevertheless, despite the open invitation, for now, scientists are reserved about the study of the stone. According to Williams, who consulted with an engineer and geologist in examining the exhibit, the electrical component showed no evidence of gluing or soldering of any kind. This confirms the fact that the object was already there at the time the rock was formed. After the stone was discovered, the geological analysis showed it to be about 100,000 years old, a technical impossibility according to the conventional understanding of human technological development. The triple wire plug is found in a matrix whose origin is still unknown. The dimensions are miniature, its diameter is only 8 millimeters, and the length of each connector pin is only 3 millimeters. The distance between the pins is 2.5 millimeters, and the width of each pin is 1 millimeter. This suggests that its creator was a very skilled artisan. It does not appear to be made of wood, plastic, rubber, or any other material we know of. It is weakly attracted to a magnet, and an ohmmeter reading reveals that it has a resistance approaching that of an open circuit. Williams forbade the breaking of the specimen to see what was inside, using X-rays to do so, which revealed that the binding matrix continued into the stone in the form of some strange structure. While skeptics call it a forgery, Williams is convinced he has unearthed a real relic made by ancient humans, or that it is an alien technology. He expresses a desire for scientists to verify this origin of the artifact, but under the following conditions. He insists on being present during the analysis. He also insists that the stone remains undamaged and that he does not have to pay for the research conducted. Some believe that scientists are distancing themselves from this pattern because they are scared of what they might find. While scientific analysis may confirm that this is a fabricated fiction, it may also radically change our understanding of human history. If the specimen is determined to be genuine, researchers will also need to consider its design. Why would such an object have to be embedded in a rock? Moreover, what would it be for? Williams believes the location of his rock offers further evidence of a bygone civilization or extraterrestrial presence. He is currently recruiting a team of unbiased researchers to study the site in detail. If you liked this video, please share it and subscribe to the channel. Another way to support us is to like the video. Based on the number of likes, we understand which content you want more of.